So, uh, we're going to start with number three. We're going to go through numbers three, seven, and eight. Uh, and number three is a great one to start with because take a look at our first term. What's our, what are we missing with our first term in this equation? A fraction, right? How can we turn x into a fraction? What can we put in front of x? Mason? 1 over 1. 1 over 1, exactly. We're going to put 1 over 1 in front of our x. So now we have three denominators, 1, 3, and 6. What's our LCD between those three numbers going to be? 6, right? We see that 3 is a factor of 6. So we know that our larger number is going to be the LCD. So that LCD tells us what we want each of our fractions denominators to be. X has a coefficient of 1 over 1. Then we just have a constant of 2 over 3. And that's equal to 13 over 6. So we're going to leave that right hand, uh, we're going to leave this fraction alone. Or we could say that we're multiplying it by 1 over 1. What are we going to multiply 2 thirds by if we want to get a 6 on the bottom? 2 over 2, right? That's going to give us a 6 on the bottom. And then what about 1 over 1x? What can we multiply that by? 6 over 6. So we multiply across, we get 6 over 6x plus 4 over 6 equals 13 over 6. over 6x plus 4 over 6 equals 13 over 6. What can we do now? Now that we see all those 6's on the bottom, now what can we do with them? We're going to cancel them out. We're just going to cross these 6's out. If all of our terms are out of 6, then we can just get rid of the 6's and just look at the top, which is 6x plus 4 equals 13. Brandon? Quickly, yeah. Now that we have 6x plus 4 equals 13, we're back in the familiar form of solving equations. We'll subtract 4 from both sides. It's going to give us 6x equals 9. And then what's our last step going to be here if we want to get x all by itself? Divide both sides by 6. That gives us x is equal to, well, if we have 3 times 3 over 3 times 2, we're just going to get 3 over 2 for our answer there. For number 3. Moving on to number seven. Sorry, any questions about number four? No, sorry, number three. Before we move forward. Okay. Number seven. We've got a similar looking problem, except hopefully you guys notice that there's two variable terms here on the left, okay? I saw a lot of people, whatever we get here for this number, I think 10, adding 10 to both sides. We can't do that because this is going to be 10K in a second here. So first, what's our LCD between 1, 2, and 4? It's going to be 4, right? So we want to make 4s on the bottom. We've got negative 2 over 1K minus 5 over 2K equals negative 9 over 4. So if we want a 4 on the bottom, what do we have to multiply this first fraction by? 4 over 4, because we've got 1 in the denominator. If we want a 4, we're going to have to multiply it by 4. What about this second fraction? 
What's going to be our whole fraction multiplier here? It's going to be 2 over 2, right? Because we have a 2 on the bottom already. So we multiply those 2's across and we get 4. And negative 9 over 4, we could just say we're going to multiply by 1 over 1. 4 times negative 2 gives us negative 8k minus 10k equals negative 9. How did I get from here to here? Can someone help me? How did I get from this step to this completely different looking equation all of a sudden? Hannah, what do we do? That's right. We multiplied across the top, and then we just didn't write the denominators, because what are all three going to have a denominator of? Four. Four, right? So once we get a little bit more comfortable with this, I'm totally fine if you skip that step and just jump right into the equation to solve. We know that we're going to cancel out all our denominators anyway. But again, by doing that, you run the risk that you multiplied incorrectly. Um, just be super careful when we're doing this, as always. So what's the uh, first step we're going to do here? Are we going to add 10 to both sides? No, what are we going to do instead? That's right. Like I mentioned, we have two variable terms on the same side of the equation. So before we start moving any terms over and dividing both sides and doing all that stuff, we have to combine these like terms. Negative 8 and negative 10. That gives us negative 8 minus 10k equals negative 9. Hopefully we remember combining like terms. That was from, I think, 7.2, right? So what is negative 8 minus 10? Negative 18. K equals negative 9. What are we going to divide both sides by here? Negative 18, right? Those cancel out on the left. Now what do we get as an answer? Negative 9 over negative 18. What's that going to simplify to? Can someone help me out? Negative 1 half? Well, 9 over 18 is definitely 1 over 2, but because we have... Okay, please leave. When we have a negative sign over a negative sign, those negative signs then cancel out, right? Giving us a positive result. Yes, Jordan? Sure. Any questions about number seven? All right, I'm going to do number eight on the back side of this just because we're running out of room here. Number eight is once again one of those problems where we have two variable terms on the same side. Eventually, we're going to have to combine those terms. But for now, let's just focus on fraction busting. What's our LCD going to be here between three and six? That's an easy one. It's going to be six, right? So we don't have to do anything to our left-hand side. What are we going to multiply negative 20 over three by on the right? 2 over 2. That's going to give us a 6 on the bottom. 1 over 6n plus 23 over 6n equals negative 40 over 6. So all we did, all we did was inflate that negative 20 over 3 two times. We made it twice as large by multiplying by 2 over 2. 
um, just so we can cross out all of these sixes. So that we have 1n plus 23n equals negative 40. Now that we've fraction busted, we'll split our equation. We're going to combine these like terms because we have two variable terms here. And then what's the last step we need to do to both sides here? We're going to divide both sides by 24. That's right. 24s cancel out. What is negative 40 over 24 simplified to? Let's figure it out. 40 is 4 times 10. 24 is 4 times 6, right? We can cross out 10 and make it 5 times 2. 6 is going to be 3 times 2. We'll cancel the 4s and the 2s, and we're left with negative 5 over 3. Does anyone see a different way we could have solved this problem? Well, let's talk about it. Let's talk about a different way we could have solved this problem. 1 over 6n plus 23 over 6n equals negative 20 over 2, right? Oh, 3. What do we notice about the left side of this equation? Anyone notice anything interesting about our denominators? They're the same, right? Do we have the same type of term here? Are these like terms? Yeah, they are. So, because we have two fractions that are like terms with the same denominator, can't we just combine these like terms right away? Yeah, right? That would give us 1 plus 23 over 6, which is... 24 over 6n equals negative 20 over 3. You guys see what I did there? Give me a thumbs up if you see what I did right here. We just combined like terms. Now we're still going to multiply this side by 2 over 2. And it's really not even that much of a shortcut. It's pretty much the same amount of work either way. I just want you guys to start to kind of see these patterns, right? There may be simpler ways to solve things. We just got to think outside the box a little bit. We see that we have the same denominator with the same variable. And you may even determine, hey, 24 over 6 simplifies to just 4, right? So we could simplify this to... 4n equals negative 20 over 3, but then again, it's still the same amount of work. So like I said, it's the same amount of work, but there's different ways to solve the same problem, right? That's the idea here. All right. Any questions about this worksheet? Perfect.